Hey, welcome back to Taproot TV. I am Benna Hughes and I'm here today with Mark Paradise and we've got a treat for them today because some people may have wanted to develop a custom program for their company to help them reduce human error right. or stop human error. That sounds like a big task. It is, it is. And, and really that's what uh, the whole stopping human error thing is all about. I th you've been working really hard on this. It, it <laughs> it's been, been like a <laughs> major dedication it's with been, you. It's been probably a couple of years now. Yeah. It has really been, and, there was, and the book itself has taken a long time to do. So trying to explain what human error is all about is really important, especially the tapper users out here who might be considering, A, either developing a custom mm -hmm. program, or if they've got a program already, seeing what we have to say about it and, and revising it and improving it. Right, and, and that's what human uh, performance is all about, improving. Continuous Making, improvement. Exactly. So we have got, a, it's, it's very exciting, basically announcing that we will have the book. We'll be ready about the summit time. Yes, cross my fingers. Crossing our fingers and the course. So tell, the course us, will be ready. tell us a little background about why you decided to to write this. Okay, well I guess I should give you some background about um, the whole human performance yes. technology um, That's very philosophy or whatever yeah. you want to call it. It started out back in the 80s. Um, the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations was trying to get the nuclear industry to prove, mm -hmm. improve performance. And they could see there was a lot of the incidents they had were all resulted because of human error. And so they decided, well, we should come up with some techniques to improve um, human performance. And, and I got involved because I had talked to the guys over at Impo, and they had me review what they were doing for the, it's called HPES, which is Human Performance Evaluation System. Mm -hmm. And I told them they were missing some stuff, and I actually suggested the management system portion of their uh, technique and they adopted what I sent them and used that in HPES. So this is way back in the 80s. And that was sort of the start of the industry's efforts to improve human performance. And they had a lot of other stuff they developed. Some of it was pretty mm -hmm. good, some of it was eh, not so good. Yeah. And, uh, and it got adopted, all of it did, in the nuclear industry. And some of it caused improvement mm -hmm. and some of it um, I really think of as blame oriented. Yeah, that's techniques. what I was reading and what you wrote. Yeah, it was really things like, uh, oh, listen, you should have a questioning attitude. Mm -hmm. Questioning attitude is one of their um, tools. Mm -hmm. Or you need to pay attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Or you should use STAR. They have a bunch of other techniques. And uh, validate your assumptions. You should validate your assumptions. <laughs> we can't have those assumptions. Validate those assumptions. And, and those kinds of things. And, and there was a huge focus on this thing called error traps and precursors, mm -hmm. where you were supposed to watch for this list of error traps, which was, oh, that could be anywhere, a, a plus 30 error traps you were looking for. And when you see one, then you apply these other techniques not to get trapped. And uh, a lot of the air traps are on the root cause tree. Right. They're, they're things that are root causes. But just knowing that they're there doesn't take them away. Right. You've got to fix the root causes right. if you're going to stop the problem. And they don't do that. So there's missing things from these programs. And those missing things keep people from making the progress they should. Now, they made progress, mm -hmm. but they didn't make as much as they should. And so, you know, during the years, I've seen this go on. And, and we were developing really the granddaddy of the systems, we were developing Taproot, mm -hmm. and, and we saw that as, this is how you improve human mm -hmm. performance. But even though we said that, um, people couldn't understand how they'd use it proactively. And so, I mean, they understood how to use it reactively, right. but that didn't seem to be what this other stuff was about. Right. So what we've done is taken Taproot and the and how to use it proactively mm -hmm. and how to use it to improve human performance and the best practices in Taproot and marry that up with the, the really good practices out of the nuclear industry's mm -hmm. human performance technology and made a, I guess I'd call it a training for people so they can understand all this stuff, mm -hmm. understand how it all works. And then they... The, one of the problems with the uh, nuclear industry's implementation of all this was that they had so much 
that it was overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And so what we've done is say, okay, here's 10 things. And as we go through teaching them, I want you to figure out which of those 10 you want to implement, which ones are really good right. for you. And so that you can pick, oh, I like this one. This one, mm-hmm. this one really helps with the problem we've got over here. And then you can pick, well, these are the ones I want to do. And then we make an implementation plan at the end where you don't have to do them all at once. Right. You can implement some and some you can save for year two or year three. And you can sort of mold this program to be your custom mm-hmm. program so you can implement it as you can afford the effort to make the improvement happen. I think it's great. And I like, I've been reading your book, um, a draft of your book yep. lately. And I, you know, one of the things that I take away from it is a lot of things in the past were, I mean, it just relied on the human. And so to even correct the human, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was like this little cycle. So well, one of the things you have to ask yourself is why is there a human there in the first place? Yes. Um, one of the, uh, we'll talk about the summit in a minute because mm-hmm. what we've got is this course coming up on March 9th and 10th, and then we've got the summit coming up on the 11th through the 13th. And one of the things we talk about in the summit is automation and attention. Yeah. And so, you know, you have to ask yourself the question, well, why do I have a human in, mm-hmm. in this and the, to start right. with, why isn't it all automated? Why isn't it all AI? And there's some good answers well, to that. Well, there are some good answers <laughs> There's some very good answers. And, and so, then, so then when you figure that out, you might say, well, you know, we have people doing things that we shouldn't have people doing. Mm-hmm. And we've got automation doing things that we shouldn't have automation doing. Right. And we need to change some of our basic design philosophy. Now, most people in the field don't have it chance to do that. Mm-hmm. But this course could also be for people who are more in the design oriented things so they can see, oh, look at the problems we're going to cause. And so, you know, this two day course, you may come out of it thinking, all right, I need, I need this training mm-hmm. for my supervisors. I need this training for my managers. I need this part for my engineers who are out there designing mm-hmm. things. I need this part for my operations and maintenance guys who are out there making the mistakes, right? right? And and it isn't this, the Stopping Human Error mm-hmm. course is one course for everybody. It's a course that gives you the knowledge to say, this is what I want to do to improve, and here's where, how I'm going to go about that. And so maybe, maybe if you're building new facilities, you say, hey, I need to get my engineers trained in some of this stuff, and what are we going to do for training of engineers? Where if you're a much more an operations-oriented plant, you'd say, what do I need to train my supervisors in that they can work with the systems mm-hmm. they have to make human performance better? Well, it's kind of like what Taproot does is it removes bias, and this does the same thing because the people doing those jobs, they have, I mean, that is their, they have their tunnel vision on what they're wanting to achieve, but they may not be thinking about the end user in mind. Right, right. And this helps open their eyes and get them to ask questions and think about all those things. Right. I think it's going to be fascinating. I'm super excited about this. So in the course, right. um, I was looking at, at a little bit about what you mentioned about what goes on. Like at, It's going to be interactive, and at the end, they're going to have a... Uh, they're going to have something to take home. I was I was thinking of how they're going to mark their pages yeah. to say it's sort of like you go through. Oh, this is this is my I, I like this idea. I'm going to get right. this idea right here, and so then they, you know mark that one. And, and then when you get all done, you say, oh, I've got you know eight of these. Well, we can't do eight of these. You know the first quarter. Right. What are we going to do first? What's going to get the most bang for the buck for us? What ones am I going to delay a little bit? Mm-hmm. Which ones do I need another one to set that up to mm-hmm. work? So we get we make one step at a time and get to where we're going, not by trying to do everything at once. Right. And which ones, you may, if you've got a program already, you may go, hey, we've got two or three of these we're doing that are really counterproductive, and we need to stop doing those. Yeah. Because all they're really doing is turning people against uh, the program because it's blame oriented. It blames yes. people, and they can be overwhelming, and there's too much, and all yeah, the, all those kind of things. So the 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 latest thing, you know, um, the latest thing in the nuclear industry is they're trying to scale all this stuff back because they've realized it's overwhelming. They've mm-hmm. realized, holy cow, um, there's no way anybody can do mm-hmm. all this, and they really want to get the most bang for their buck and bring their program down to a usable yeah. um, set of tools. And that's another reason for people to attend. Somebody from the nuclear industry who thinks they know everything there is to know about improving human performance may want to go to see, hey, some of these things you're doing aren't aren't right. the things you should be doing. 
So for Tapper users, they're going to see a lot of things they've seen before, but they're going to see it from a different angle. Yeah. They're going to see it from the idea of, you know, I, I recognized how we use this to investigate an incident and develop corrective actions, mm -hmm. but we're now going to show you how to take these things and implement them as best practices that will um, improve human performance and you don't have to have the accident. I love that. I mean, I think it's it's fantastic, and it's a, a really nice uh, another way to use Taproot. And like you said, you can implement it with what other proactive techniques and stuff right, like that right. you already have at your company. And so it, it makes it a really nice package. Sure. So I, I, I think it's fantastic. I think people are really going to enjoy it. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the whole track you've got going on? Sure. So, human so, you, so think of this as a package. Yes. Think of it as you go to the two-day course and then go to the summit. Mm -hmm. Because the two-day course is the, the detailed, what's your program going to be? The summit is all about meeting people, networking, benchmarking, sharing best practices, and, and learning from experts. Yes, and I'm one of those best. experts. I'll it's, be there. It's the I'm, best. I'm giving quite a few of the talks in the human um, performance track. And so we start out with a, a session that's about best practices mm -hmm. that people are using out in the field. So these are Tapper users and what they're doing to improve human mm -hmm. performance. And, and the second one is an overview of what's this Stopping Human Error program about. Now, if you're in, uh, if you went to the two-day course, you may pick something else to right. go to because we've got 30 yes. tracks to pick or 30 sessions to pick from. So there's you three or four other ones that yes. you can go to instead of that one because you already know what, right. what it's about. Um, then the next one's about automation and awareness. And this is the one, this goes all the way back to the research I did in, I guess it would have been 83 to 85, on what's the fun function allocation for the humans in the next generation of nuclear power plants. And that was all about automation right. and what should be automated and what shouldn't be automated. And the amazing thing to me is that research I did back in the mid 80s is still just as applicable mm -hmm. today because the lessons learned are really the same yeah. kinds of things. So I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to talk about either awareness or situational awareness if you want to call it that. And, and how those two sort of fit together, too, because a lot of times the, the automation can lead the operator or the, the person controlling to sort of get out of the loop and not be aware of what's going on. Well, and you then, lose kind of your muscle memory type stuff. Well, like if you're, if you're, that, And but, you get relaxed. You, know, <laughs> so, you can get, you so, get relaxed. so relaxed that you're asleep. <laughs> I mean, everybody's seen that video of the guy driving the Tesla, not driving the Tesla, <laughs> sleeping in the Tesla That's right. as it goes down the road. And obviously, they've turned so much over mm -hmm. to automation there. And they, and they say, hey, you're supposed to have your hands on the wheel or you're supposed to be alert, you're supposed to have your eyes right. open, you're supposed to be watching the road. Well, he obviously wasn't, no. was he? And the car was just clipping on down the road. Well, and, and they supposedly and have, can happen a lot they of supposedly places. have like some little safeguards in place if your hands are off for certain, but people are learning how to rig around some of that. Well, I don't, know, I don't know what his, I don't know what his deal was, but he was not, he was not oh, holding on. Funny. He must have his wee hands taped to the wheel, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, people get real creative. They do, they do. So, so that's the point. There's reasons why you want a human in the system, and one of the reasons you want them in the system is to take over mm -hmm. if the automation doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Or well, crashes. That, well, the that, system well, that's, crashes that's from before, overwhelm. Yeah. So the, the answer is you want to be ready to mm -hmm. do that. Well, you're not if you haven't been right. involved. And, and that's one and of that's the points just, we're going to make in this session. That's just natural. Yep, yeah. it is. Oh, lessons learned from space. We well, get, Jim Weatherby's we going to talk. Again. He's going to talk about what he's learned from space and how that impacts um, performance mm -hmm. and how you can improve performance. And and it mainly when he talks about it, you'll see it is mainly human performance mm -hmm. he's talking about. He's not talking about how to design a rocket. Right. He's talking about astronauts and how they accomplish their job in space and what they do to do that. And, and what you'll find is a large part of that is just rigorous, rigorous training mm -hmm. um, that they have to go through, which you sort of know about, but maybe you don't. And so he can he can sort of clue you in as to what kinds of yeah, things they do. It's fascinating. Let's see, improving your manufacturing process. So these are Taproot users who are using Taproot to change manufacturing process. And we don't we don't talk about that very we much. We don't. And so I, this is a really good time to get 
real life experience of applying Taproot, which is all about improving human performance in a manufacturing mm -hmm. environment. And um, let's see, we also have Chap Workshop, and that's a part of your book too. Yeah, so the, you know, we, and I'm not sure which one Heidi's doing. I'm not sure if she's going to take the proactive approach mm -hmm. or the reactive approach, but Taproot was built to be a reactive right. tool. And it really is an information collection tool and, and a way to look at human performance in detail. And, and so it's a natural fit with the Stopping Human Error. And in the Stopping Human Error course, we, we talk about CHAP, um, but we don't go do an exercise. This will give them an exercise yeah. to do. So there's going to be a lot of interactive learning if they go to your course and then and they, they do things together. like that. And you together. really can take some stuff home. And that's how people learn best, too. It so. is. Um, Marcus Miller, uh, the, one of the last uh, breakout sessions, is going to do how does discipline fit into your investigations? And, yep. we're like and, and obviously, if you're looking into human performance, one of the things you want to think about is, well, everybody always talks about how do we change behavior? Mm -hmm. And that's code words for how do we punish people exactly. to do the right thing? And and what, I don't want to take Marcus's mm -hmm. thing away, but he really tells you where does yeah. discipline fit into an incident investigation. And so that does get you into a little bit more of um, where is the uh, behavior change mm -hmm. part of Taproot. And changing behavior is tough. Oh, well. <laughs> You know, everybody thinks it's, <laughs> it's if you've got a kid, you know. <laughs> or a dog or anything. anything. <laughs> yes, anything. absolutely. It's a very complete track, and I think it's going to be well, wonderful. Well, and then, we're not done yet. They come back on Friday. Oh, that's besides right. besides having the big speaker on Friday, you've got the roadmap session. Yeah, we haven't talked about that in a and few so sessions. And so when you take your, your pieces of things you're going to do mm -hmm. from the course, and now you've had your learning from yeah. the summit, you really get a session to sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to modify some things. I'm going to add a couple more things. I'm going to move a couple things around. And I'm going to develop this roadmap that I can go back to work with to implement everything I've learned. Yes. Not just the two-day course, but also the stuff I've learned from the summit. Those have been so popular with clients. They're loving that, to not have to just like feel like they're on their own in regards it's to that. It's just a great process. It, it, it is. really is a great it, process. It has become a... a a perfect tool to fit with what we do in then, helping people. And then, of course, we end with a, a speaker who's going to tell us all about the ways we can go oh, uh, yeah. pipe checks <laughs> and whatever. Um, uh, you know, it's really uh, funny that we've got... And that is funny ending, I will say. Yep. So, so if you want to learn to get away with anything, uh, and, well, he we didn't. have the expert. He didn't. But, he, you know, the funny thing about it is all the things he did fake airline pilot, fake attorney, fake doctor. These are real. He, these weren't like he was just going out and playing this on TV. Yeah. He was in surgery. And he wasn't performing the oh, surgery. Oh, that was crazy. He was yeah. in surgery. And he did that all before he was 23. Mm -hmm. He was young. So before a lot of people get out of college, he had impersonated an airline pilot, impersonated, um, uh, impersonated a doctor, impersonated... Uh, well, he, he was actually hired by <laughs> and performed as a district attorney in Louisiana, passed the bar. <laughs> He'd it, never been to college. He didn't finish high school, and he passed the bar. If you haven't watched the movie, Catch Me If You Can, yep. uh, with Leon Leonardo DiCaprio, and you're coming to the summit, you want to watch that movie before you come because it's, that's, got, it's, it's based on this man's life. Yeah, and, and it was actually, I think, more amazing than the movie was. Now, they made, there's, you'll, it find, out, is. you'll find out when he talks, there's a yeah. few things in the movies that are not quite exactly like real life was, but he did more amazing stuff than what was in the movie. And it, you just sit there and go, he, he escaped. When he was in prison, he faked that he was a... Um, what do you want to call it? One of these guys who comes in and infiltrates things, oh. so that so that they thought he was there infiltrating the prison. So they gave him special stuff. Oh, that's hilarious! Because he'd fake to them, "Well, I'm not really in prison. I'm here to do investigative work." <laughs> undercover. <laughs> undercover. Yes. He was undercover in prison, and and they the warden bought it. And I think, I think how can you how can this be? But he was that good at, at just going with it. But now he uses his his skills right. <laughs> for good. Well, so 
and he had got a long prison. So, uh -huh. well, he he first off he went to prison in France to start with, mm -hmm. then went to prison in Sweden. So all these countries had extradition things on him, and finally he got extradited to the U.S. and started his prison terms here. And he had a long term to serve, but the FBI was so impressed with his abilities that they said, "Listen, if you'll come work mm -hmm. for us, we'll let you get out of prison." And we aren't going to pay you. Mm -hmm. You got to work for us for free, and you can get another job to you know pay yourself or whatever. But you're going to be working for us for free, and you can't go do any of this baloney anymore. You're going to help us get people who are doing it. That's fantastic. And that's what fantastic. he did. So that's how he got turned straight. And he he said really that didn't that wasn't really it. It was it was the woman he married that got him. Oh, those wonderful out. women. It's a, it's, a, it's a love story at the end, and that wasn't in the movie at all. Well, you know, one of the things I found when we have all the our last keynote speakers, it's usually someone based on a movie, and the movies have been fantastic, but the real story's even better. Yep. It's yep. just one, it, amazing. You're just your jaw drops. So that doesn't have too much to do about human performance, maybe a little, but, it, but it's, it, a great, it's a great it, ending it, it to is. the summer. So <laughs> plan to stay till after lunch so you can, you know, get his... Yeah, autograph and so talk to him afterwards it's and so uh, interesting. then head to the airport yep. later in the day. Later in the day. And so speaking of the summit and staying till the end of it, you need to register first. It's not very so far away. it's not. It is I mean this is we're almost in mid January already. Of course it's the ninth tenth of March. <laughs> yep. Summit's eleventh, twelfth and thirteenth. Yep. So it's just down the road. And we've had lots of people already registering and we want you to be there. So go to our website at taproot.com and you go to you can do slide summit or there's a, a button up upper right hand we'll put, corner. We'll put something underneath we will. The thing and, so they can just click there. And we'll put a link to the blog article that our conversation today was based we'll actually, on as well. We'll actually put this in the blog I article. think that's a great idea. Okay. That's a better idea. And then it'll be the video version and the written version all together. Well, they want to be able to get it all. So to do that, you need to follow us on all of our social media platforms and you need to subscribe to our channel. That's a good idea. You need to Some, there's a subscribe button and a bell to click down the there. The bell, you need the notification bell and you need to like us and comment. We would love to know, you know, it, do you all need to uh, stop human error at your company? Yeah, say, <laughs> hey, I need this course. I mean, it's it. I think this is going to be an absolute um, fantastic thing for people to take back to their companies. I and so I love too. the way you ha have it set up. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be great. And thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully uh, you'll go register for su the summit and then join us back here next week. Thank you.